himself in the depths of the mine, the boy felt lonelier and more afraid than ever. Not only was there no one around to tell him about the Valley of the Flowers, there was no one to tell him how to get out. And so he began picking his way, this way and that, up passageways, down ladders, through crevices so tiny he had to take his pot off and push it ahead of him, until he came in the mine to a big metal door with a small brass plaque which read, T. Terrius Fennywake, in charge. Pushing open the door, a most magnificent commotion aw awaited the boy. Charts, graphs, stacks of paper lined the room. The boy didn't know where to sit or stand. Ticker tape machines, telephones, stereographs, and all other manner of implements that busy people use to just show others how busy they are, were going off the hook, and the man madly spoke on two, three, four telephones all at once. So engrossed was he that it took him at least 50, maybe 25 minutes before he noticed the boy standing in the corner. When he did, he demanded, what do you want? The boy composed himself, began to tell the man about the flower on his back, his dying grandmother, and his search for the valley of the flowers. A flower? Flower? Must be very valuable. Must be very valuable. Does it bloom gold? Does it bloom gold? Silver? Silver. The boy shook his head. Not that I know of, said he. Well then, is there some sort of rich flower collector who's willing to pay a high price for its blossom? A high price for this flower? No, said the boy. Well, man, what is it then? What is it then? People don't just go off traipsing about after nothing. <laughs> the boy composed himself and tried to explain to the man again that his dying grandmother had given him the flower, and as such it had a special sentimental significance. <laughs> sentimental <laughs> significance? <laughs> Jeez, um, crow boy, just who do you think you're talking to here? Look at these charts, look at these graphs. Do you have any idea how busy I am? I don't have time to sit here and have you mumble about sentimental significance. And with that, the man flew into a tirade about free market capitalism, about the industry of the individual, about how it takes money to make money, and about how the Lord helps those who help themselves. Help themselves and treat people like you looking for a free ride. And he continued on. Don't you know? And on. And on for 30, 45, 75 minutes. And the boy, growing weary and a little hungry, had to excuse himself. The man paid no attention, and the boy backed out of the room. The tirade could be heard long, long down the hall.